Okay, in this video we are going to talk about factoring the difference of two squares, which you might call dots. Uh, I've heard people do that. I don't really do it. Um, let's take a look at it and see what it is. So difference of two squares is going to look like um, a squared minus b squared. And when you're dealing with a squared minus b squared, you can always factor it into the following form. It'll look like a plus b, so you you say the quantity a plus b, times the quantity a minus b. Um, that's what it's always going to be. Or you could say a minus b times a plus b. It's up to you. It's kind of like a glass half full, half empty situation. So there's a couple things uh, that happen with this. I mean, it shows up everywhere from Algebra 1 up. So what you definitely want to do is you want to memorize this um, because you're going to see it all the time. You want to not have to think too hard. You want to recognize it when it does show up. You definitely want to not confuse it with the sum of two squares. A sum of two squares looks like this. It's a squared plus b squared. That's not going to factor for us because we're talking about um, over the real numbers, which doesn't really matter probably for this video. So let's do a bunch of examples and um, see how to use it. I usually like to start off with just numbers when I'm looking at these kinds of things. So I'm just going to look at 28 squared minus 2 squared and see how it kind of works for that. So uh, I'm color coding everything so that I can keep track of it. So it's going to be the quantity and then 28 plus 2 times the quantity 28 minus 2. All right. And then uh, this is just arithmetic. So 28 plus 2 is 30. 28 minus 2 is 26. And then if I multiply those, 3 times 26 is 60 plus 18, so 78, so 780. All right, so we can actually use it to help us do some arithmetic stuff, and that's kind of neat. Let's take a look at a very standard example. So something like x squared minus 81. So if we have x squared minus 81, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this look exactly like a squared minus b squared. So it's going to be x squared and then minus 9 squared. So I notice that 81 is a perfect square. Um, so now I can just kind of plug in to what I know. So that's always going to be x plus 9 and x minus 9. So making it look like a difference of squares is a good idea if you don't immediately recognize it. So for example, let's do this next one. We have 16x squared minus 49. So it's going to be important that you um, identify perfect squares as you do this kind of thing. So 16 is a perfect squared, x squared is a perfect squared, and 49 is a perfect square. So we can actually deal with this with a difference of squares. So the square root of 16 is 4, the square root of x squared is x. So uh, this is going to be the quantity 4x squared, and then minus, uh, you could put the quantity 7 squared, or you can just write 7 squared. I'm going to put the quantity 7 squared. Um, so we have this, and now we just plug into the formula. So noticing that it is a difference of squares is important, and then also being able to correctly identify the squares that you're dealing with. So here we get 4x plus 7 times 4x minus 7. All right, those are pretty standard examples. Uh, I'm going to do one that's a little more challenging now. So let's say we have x squared over 4 minus 25y squared. So this, when you look at it, is actually still a difference of squares because x squared and 4 are both perfect squares. 25 and y squared are both perfect squares. So we can definitely use our difference of squares on this. So I'm going to say equals. Um, x squared over 4, uh, if I were to take the square root, I would get x over 2. So this is going to be the quantity x over 2 and then squared. You can always check that you're doing this correctly by just, you know, square what you got there. So it'd be x squared over 2 squared or x squared over 4. So you're back to the original. And then minus um, the quantity 5y squared. And now we can just plug into our formula that we have memorized. Um, it's going to be equal to, so x over 2 plus 5y times x over 2 minus 5y. All right, so not bad. Uh, I'm going to do three more examples. The next one you definitely might see in an Algebra 1 type class. Uh, algebra 2, uh, you would definitely see this. Um, so here it is. We have x to the fourth minus 16. So x to the fourth is actually a perfect square. If you look at it, it's actually x squared squared. So we can still do this. 
And then 16 is definitely a perfect square, right? That's quantity four squared. And now let's just plug in. So we get x squared plus four and x squared minus four. So x squared plus four is a sum of two squares and that does not factor for us. Um, but x squared minus four is actually another difference of squares. So we can do this again. So I'm gonna keep the x squared plus four factor. So we have x squared plus four. And then now I'm just gonna actually factor x squared minus four. So it's x squared minus two squared. So it's gonna be the quantity x plus two times the quantity x minus two. All right, so we're actually able to use it twice on that problem. And that's not so unusual. You might see that quite a bit. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is two examples and kind of a warning for you, but I feel like if you're following the video, you can definitely follow along with these. Uh, these are very unlikely to show up if you're in an Algebra 1 course, but you might be in Algebra 2 or in Free Calc or Calculus, depending on what you're reviewing. Um, so I wanna show you these because you can actually use this on all kinds of things. So for example, you might have x squared minus six. x squared is definitely a perfect square. Six is not a perfect square, but we can actually still do this. So if I say this equals the quantity x squared minus, now I just need to think, what would I square to get six? Well, I could square the square root of six. So I have the quantity square root of six squared. Once you've written that, now it's just a difference of squares, so we can just fill it in. So x plus radical six and x minus radical six. And it still works. Uh, you're just unlikely to have to do this or even maybe want to do this in an Algebra 1 class. But when you get to Algebra 2 and Pre-Calc, you almost certainly want to do this. So these are good examples for kind of the future, depending on when you're watching this. Uh, we could also have something like x minus 3. So uh, later on in your life, you'll have places where this makes sense to do. But we can look at this as what would I square to get x? I would square the square root of x. So quantity square root of x squared. And then what would I square to get three? The square root of three. So I have the square root of x squared minus the square root of three squared. That's a difference of squares. So I am going to factor it. So square root of x plus square root of three, square root of x minus the square root of three. So it's kind of weird that you might do these, but it still just fits the pattern and a lot of algebra is just pattern recognition. Um, so that's about it. I hope you found this helpful and good luck.